back with the report card, chapter 20, called A Short Vacation. Anne had earned a perfect attendance record in grades four, five, six, eight, and 10. She loved going to school, and Anne had never, never tried to stay home from school on purpose, not once, at least not during my lifetime. That's why I had been forced to turn to my big brother, Todd, to learn the fine art of malingering. Todd pretended to be sick about once a month, usually about three days after he got a new computer game. Todd knew how to make himself throw up. He could make his face break out in red blotches. He could seem to come down with a sudden fever, and he could manufacture toilet noises that made mom or dad pound on the bathroom door and shout, Todd, Todd, are you all right in there? Todd was the master. I only faked being sick when I absolutely had to, and that's how I felt on Monday morning. I couldn't deal with Stephen or Miss Hackney or my mom or dad or anybody. I needed to be alone. So first I waited until dad left for work because he's always more suspicious than mom. Then I got myself nice and hot by stepping up and down on my desk chair about 30 times. Then I climbed into bed, pulled up the covers and called, mom, could you come in here? My, my stomach doesn't feel so good. One hand on my forehead was all it took. You feel a little feverish too. Poor dear, probably one of those bugs that's going around. This is such a miserable time of year. A few minutes later, mom brought me a tray with a glass of Sprite and some dry toast. As she fluffed my pillows and tucked in my quilt, she said, I've got three appointments this morning, Nora, but I'll check in by phone, okay? I called Miss Ferris next door and she's at home all day today. She'll come over to check on you in an hour or so. She's got a key and I'll come by at lunchtime. If you need anything at all, you just call me or your dad, all right? And you stay here and rest. I only nodded. I was too weak to speak. Five minutes later, a beautiful silence settled over the house, and finally, I felt like I could actually think, except I didn't. I went downstairs to the family room and did the opposite of thinking. I turned on the TV. I flipped to the Learning Channel and toured castles in Ireland for a while, and then I explored the Great Barrier Reef, and then went digging for dinosaur bones in Wyoming. I was on vacation. At about 9.30, Miss Ferris opened the front door and called, Yoo-hoo, Nora, it's me, Miss Ferris. She came into the family room, fussed around for a few minutes, and then left. I was just beginning a submarine journey to the wreck of the Titanic when the phone rang. I hit the mute button on the remote, and using my sickest voice, I said, Hello? It wasn't Mom. A lady said, Hello, um, may I speak with Mr. and Miss Rowley? I've always been told never to let a caller know that I was home alone, so I said, well, my dad's back out in the yard with Rolf. That's our German shepherd. May I have your name and number so my dad can call you back in a few minutes? There was a pause and the lady said, Nora, is that you? And then I knew that voice. It was Miss Hackney. I gulped and said, yes. And to stall for a time, I asked, who is this? It's Miss Hackney, Nora. I need to speak with your mother. The tone of her voice told me this was not a social call, probably about the meeting for getting me into the gifted program. I said, well, I stayed home sick today and my dad's not really here right now and we don't really have a dog either. And my mom had to go out for a little bit, but she has a phone with her. And then I gave Miss Hackney the number. She said, thank you. And she hung up before I could even say, you're welcome or goodbye or anything. Seemed pretty rude, but I didn't think about it because I went right back to my exciting undersea exploration. Just as the first submarine was getting its remote camera into the dining room of the Titanic, my mom came bursting through the front door. She was halfway up the stairs to my bedroom before she heard the TV and then in two seconds flat, she was standing in front of me. With her eyes flashing and her voice down and low in the danger zone, mom said, shut off that TV. Go upstairs and get on your school clothes now. But I'm sick, Mom said. I doubt that, but frankly, right now, it doesn't matter. Get dressed. We've got to be at school in 10 minutes, so move it. Why? She shook her head. Hush, hurry. Three minutes later, we were backing out of the driveway. I hadn't even brushed my teeth. I said, well, how come we have to be at a meeting about the gifted program today? What's the big rush? My mom kept her eyes on the road, both hands tight on the steering wheel. She shook her head. That's not what this meeting is about, not by a long shot. 
This meeting is about zeros, Nora, like the ones you got on those tests on Friday. My heart started pounding. I, I was going to tell you about that, Mom. That was just a crazy idea I had, but it's all over now. I'm not going to do that anymore, honest. My mom darted a sideways look at me and then back at the road. Well, that's fine for you, but what about all the other kids? The other kids? What are you talking about? Glancing at me again, Mom said, Don't play dumb with me, Nora. That's never going to work again. I'm talking about the social studies quiz that Miss Noyes gave this morning. Miss Hackney just called me and said that all but two students on the whole blue team got zeros on the quiz. That's 40 two zeros. And because of what happened on Friday, Miss Hackney would like to have a little talk with you and with me and your father. Mom was done sharing. She pressed her lips together into a thin hard line and drove the car. It was about another two minutes to the school. Mom hadn't given me a lot of information, but I processed all the available data. Three seconds later, I knew. I knew exactly what had happened. Someone had had a busy weekend, and I knew something else too. When Stephen had tried to call me on Saturday and Sunday, I should have talked to him.